What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a beginner's guide to strength training video for you. Here I'm going to be laying out the different types of movement patterns that you should see in a proper workout. I'm also going to give you two to three different examples of the exercises and of the movement patterns. So you can pick each one and pick the one that you like and then build your own proper workout. So this is a great place to start if you are just beginning to start using strength training in your workouts. And as time goes on, I'm going to continue to keep giving you more examples of the different movement patterns, but here is just a good place to start. So let me know if you like this type of video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and more helpful content is coming your way. So a proper workout should always start with some variation of a squat. In a squat, you send the hips back as if you are going to sit on a chair and then stand back up. Here, I have my hands behind my ears in a prisoner squat. Another variation of a squat is the goblet squat. So here I am using a kettlebell with the bell up. My hands are wrapped around it and I am performing my squat, holding it in the goblet position. Next, I'm going to do a front squat. So here I am holding the dumbbells at my shoulders and I am holding my elbows up and facing forward. This way, my shoulders are also active during the whole squat. The next movement pattern in a proper workout should usually be a hip hinge. A hip hinge is important for everyday life and a proper workout. The movement is similar to bowing or bending at the hips while keeping the spine nice and flat. Here I am doing a kettlebell deadlift, holding a kettlebell in both of my hands. For my next example of a hip hinge, I am going to do a single leg deadlift. Here I am holding a kettlebell in both of my hands, my spine is remaining flat, and I am hinging at the hips with my back foot flexed like I am kicking the wall behind me. This will work your balance and it will also be a great exercise for your hamstrings and your glutes. Here you see I have switched to the other side, same thing, try to maintain that back leg being nice and straight and look down at the floor in front of you so your spine remains flat. This next example of a hip hinge I am doing something called a good morning. Usually you'll see this with maybe a barbell or a PVC pipe on your back, but I don't want to do any spinal loading, so I am just placing my fingers behind my ears, hinging the hips back, keeping my spine flat, and pulling the belly button in. As you can see, I'm working this one very slowly and controlled. Proper workout should always have a lunge. Lunges work many muscles in the lower body, making them one of the best lower body exercises. The goal is to really keep your upper body nice and straight and resisting an urge to lean forward. Here I am completing a reverse lunge by stepping backward, switching legs, and stepping back up. Another type of lunge I like to add into almost every workout is a lateral lunge. You should always move the body in all planes of motion, so here we are stepping to the side. My hands are placed on my hips, and again, you can put dumbbells in your hands as well to add a bit of loading here. And another lunge favorite of mine is the forward and reverse lunge. So here you see I am stepping forward towards the front corner of my mat and then also stepping back. You can add a little difficulty in here by not placing that foot in the center next to your other foot before stepping to the next lunge. You can just practice a pendulum lunge where you are balancing on that standing foot. A 
proper workout should always have a push movement. In a push movement, you are quite literally pushing your load, whether that be your body weight in something like a push-up or pushing an external load like a dumbbell during a dumbbell floor press like you see here. Here is an example of a body weight push movement with a modified push-up from the floor. A proper workout should also have a pulling movement. A pulling movement is where you are actually pulling a load, whether it be a resistance band, a barbell, or a dumbbell. So here I am doing bent over resistance bands rows. Another example of a pulling movement is a renegade row. Here I am pulling the dumbbell up as I row and I am in a plank. So this is sort of a full body movement all in one. Here I have placed my knees down just to modify. And lastly, we should always have something in our workouts that focus on core stabilization. The core is specifically the center of the body, and its function is to stabilize the trunk while your arms and legs move during functional movements and daily life. Here I am doing a pike plank where I'm sending the hips back and then back forward into a plank. I sometimes like to put in a farmer's carry, so here I am very stable and I am carrying a load on one side. As you see, I've switched sides. And lastly, I have a plank transfer. Here I am pulling the kettlebell underneath my body while maintaining three points of contact to the mat underneath me and trying to remain stable in the hips. This is great for core stabilization and a little added challenge.